Audio check, sound check, one, two, three, four. Audio check. Good morning, good evening to all of you. This is Perm here. We are now ready to start. Today in the session, we will go into the Business Objects Data Services, the BODS Replicator Tool, in continuation of the replication topic. We'll first up go with the recap of the SLT process flow. and then we will get started with the BODS. All right. The SLT is a SAP application replicator and uh, it provides the replication data loading to HANA so similar to this particular approach, the BODS, Business Objects Data Services, also offer a replication of application system, database system, web sources, big data sources, or any type of sources into HANA. And it supports multiple data sources like tables, extractors, etc. So we'll go into the paint to have a overview process flow awareness about the BODS replication. Let's go on to the paint. We'll draw a diagram to understand the concept. So similarly, there will be a source, there will be a replicator, and then there will be a target system. Any source, business object data services, replicator to target HANA. Just like the SLT, BODS is also a replicator, but it supports more data sources. It supports more data types other than tables. It can load from an extractor, hierarchy, and non-SAP sources. And it has got inbuilt transformation functions for the replication and retraction. So if you want to extract data back from HANA, load it into the source or other systems, we can also perform the task of replication and retraction. Right? So it's a bi-directional tool extract and retract for more complex scenarios. So sometimes there might also be a requirement to retract a data from HANA to the source or other application systems. So HANA may not be our ultimate target from HANA. We can also extract data for more computation to other systems. To these kind of complex use cases, 
we ideally go with the BODS replicator. Now, what is BODS made of? Is it a core SAP product? The BO or business objects is a different entity and the BODS data services offers the ETL service the extract transform and load it's an ETL tool within the BODS there are primarily two compartments one for the source and the other for the target and these two compartments are known as data stores yeah so you have a source data store and target data store each of these two compartments are temporary placeholders and they are going to be mapped in the BODS so that the source data sets are mapped to the target and then the data is sent over to the target HANA in the specified schema just like the SLT because tables are stored and organized in schemas in the HANA so over here also in the target data store we define which schema that we are going to replicate and then start the data flow okay, so it is an extraction and a retraction tool so we extract from the source to target even from target to other systems we can do a retraction through this ETL tool right. now from a licensing perspective we can exclusively install the BODS without the entire business objects enterprise license right. so we can only install the data services tool without the entire BO license it's a selective option for the customers what happened earlier in the older version of the Boxy 3X the older version before 2011 before 2010 so earlier version if you want to implement the BODS at that point of time it was known as BODI data integrator it comes as a bundled package so customers do not have any option to selectively install a particular tool they have to go with the entire package but today in the BODS 4 onwards the BODS version 4 onwards we can only install the BODS tool so that's possible today the BODS 4.2 4.2 uh, 4.1 onwards it's known as SAP DS all right so SAP data services 4.1 onwards the tool that we are using for our training is the latest that's 4.2 version so if your customer come back and tell you that they have a data SAP data service that basically implies the BODS so both are the same from 4.1 onwards it got renamed 
from BODS to SAP Data Services. So let's check in our system and how we perform the activities of working through the source and the target data store and both these two compartments in the BODS server are located in a repository. All right. So you have a repository. A repository is a work area for the user, for the ETL consultant. There is a workspace, a work area. In that work area, the developer will be authorized. So there can be multiple work areas in the BODS, multiple repositories in the BODS. So the one which is authorized to the ETL consultant, the consultant will log in into that specific repository and then work through the source and the target data store to do the mapping and then to perform the data loading jobs. The data loading jobs of the BODS can be a batch job or a real time. Today both you have all the jobs in BODS as real real time in 4.2 version onwards. Alright, so let's log in into the environment and go here to start all programs. You can also take the screenshots and the steps on the login process. You'll find SAP Data Services 4.2, 4.2. And over here, there are multiple other sub tools in the folder. Data Services Designer, Selector, Management Console, Repository Manager. This is for the BOE Administrator. Just like we have an SAP Basis Administrator, you have a Bob J Enterprise Administrator who will manage the authorizations, the repositories, the Bob J servers, etc. connections. So you got a repository manager, service server manager, data services workbench, and then license manager. These are other links for the BO administrator. We are now going to the ETL part of the data loading. So ETL is basically from a data loading standpoint, you got different sources in the source system layer that we're going to connect these sources towards the replication, right? It could be SLT or the bots, that's a replication layer. And then once we have the replication performed, then we will connect to the HANA database. So in HANA, you will have the HANA schema that you're going to specify and into that schema, you're going to load the table, either from an SLT, the same schema, or BODS, a separate schema. So you got different schemas for different tasks. So we are right here in the replication layer. So to start with the BODS, we're going to click on this link, the designer link. That's the tool. So what do you get when you first try and log on? It will ask you to select what is the BODS server. Now, in an ideal environment, there can, there can be one replicator for multiple sources, multiple targets, just like the SLT, one replicator multiple sources or multiple targets. All right. Okay, so please inform support if any login or technical issues. 
So you have the entry. If you don't see any of the selection, you just have to type the details. B O I D E S one colon six four zero zero. So if you don't see any any information, just type the details what you see on the screen. You can also inform the support they will be able to help you. Then your user ID and the password. So in my case, my user ID is param, and I put my password in here. The authentication is the user verification process. It is ideally an enterprise for connecting to HANA, or if you're connecting to other sources and other environments, LDAP, SAP, Applications and Windows Active Directory. Select the enterprise and click on Log On. Once you click on Log On, it is going to ask which repository do you like to connect. There's so many different repositories. What are these repositories? These repositories are the workspace. So every user or a group of users, meaning group of extractors, will have authorization to specific repositories, the specific work areas. So in an actual project environment, the ETL consultants of the bots will have access to specific repository. For the training purpose, we're going to try and log on here, DSE or P1. All right, so you got to select here, DSE or P1. Each of these repositories are password protected. Provide the password DSERP1. Right, same user, same password. So same repository, same password. Right? So these repositories are created by the administrator. For a particular project, it is a POC you have a POC repository. If it is a go live production data loading to the production target system, then you have a production repository. If it is for local testing, then there is a testing repository. Right? These repositories are created by the OPJ administrator. Just like you have a basis administrator for SAP application, you got a BOPJ administrator for the BOPJ services. So for the BODS certified ETL consultants with the experience, they will be granted the repository where they are allowed and authorized to work for development data loading, QA data loading, production data loading. Each of those data loading activities are categorized by different repositories. You have a local repository, a global repository, a provider repository, those are the technical terms that the BO administrator will use for the project management. So here in the landing, you have option for creating a new project. or opening an existing project. A project is a folder. In the folder you'd find data loading jobs, create a source and target data stores, likewise other management console for the administrator. Release notes, resources for the documentation. Blueprints with the examples for the 
experience consultants, forum, the SCN forum, SAP Community Network for troubleshooting and other technical forums, and documentations for the beginner. Now, let's create a new project, meaning create a new folder. So we can go here to project new, you can create any one of these new items. All right, so we're going to go for a new project. Provide the project name or the number, this is batch number 87. Underscore HANA TR for training create. So when you're also creating these folders, you can give the naming standard as batch number 87 underscore HANA underscore followed by your initials. Now in that folder, we will create certain data flows. So you have different objects over here when you're creating a folder and a data loading activity. Let's have a look at the left hand corner box. What do you got here? You have the repository that you're working on. This is important. You have the repository that we are working on. So every certified BODS consultant will be authorized to work with different repositories. So go to the repository where you are authorized. Now here on the first tab we have here the list of all the project folders. Each of these folders are created by different users. So this is B87, this is the previous batch previous batch, batch number 87, batch number 85, like that. So you got different folders. So for our activity here, batch number 87, that's our project folder. The next one here is the job, the batch, and the real-time. Both are real, real-time jobs. The naming is different. If we are connected from an application OLTP database sources, then for the real-time job, we create a batch job. If we are connecting from the web service or cloud, we are going to use the real-time job. So both are real, real-time jobs. Then workflows are automatic data flows. So when you create a data flow and you schedule it every single second, every single day, every single hour, every five hours, so when we schedule or make it automatic, and that automatic data flow is a workflow. These are all workflows. Workflow is a scheduled job. For the BW guys, it is all related to the process chain. Then each workflow will have a data flow. What is a data flow? Data flow is the data loading activity from a source to the target in a given sequence. It can be manually scheduled or automatically scheduled. If it's automatically managed, it will manage through the workflows. Then if the source is an SAP source and we want to have an SAP ABAP program as a ABAP data flow, then we can also use the ABAP approach for SAP sources only. Then the transformation mapping between the source and the target can specify for 
data transfer to split or generating dates, effective date, hierarchy flattening, or the delta mapping, XML mapping, data cleansing, geocoder, platform, the input split, data mask, map, this is the map reduce, mapper function, reducer function, map reduce, so it's query mapping field level, or apply some SQL validation, XML mapping, other service. So these are all the standardized transformation rules. There is no need to create any ABAP program for transformation rules. You can create your own functions over here and use it as a mapping. The next folder is the data store, those placeholder, one for the source, one for the target. See, so have source, you got target. You have a source, you got a target. So, depending upon the type of the source and target, these data stores are created. They are temporary placeholders. So, when the administrator of the BOD has created new a connection to a source, for example, source is a database, what type of database is the source? If it is Netiza, Oracle, for example, what is the Netiza version? Netiza is acquired by IBM today. So, what is the source detail? What is the port number? What is the user ID password? If the source is a adapter, Big Data, Google, BigQuery, JDE, Oracle, PeopleSoft, SAP Application Source, BW Source, so you've got different options for the details that the administrator will provide. One for the source and other for the target. Likewise, for the target, target data store is target SAP HANA, select here database, select here SAP HANA, HANA version, user details, and log on. Right? So it's ideally created by the administrators. In some of the projects, the developers are also granted the authorization with these administration access credentials, and the developer can also create these source and target data stores, but ideally performed by the administrators, because the administrator will have the service user ID, password, port number, web service details to be connected, and additional parameters that have to provide it for the connection. Then the different formats supported by the BODS, including Hadoop source and other functions. If you have custom functions, you can create, or other validation functions we can create over here. So these are the repository local objects. So let's start our activity. You can also take screenshots. We're going to create a batch job. Right click on the folder, select the batch job over here, and provide the job name or the number. Batch 87, data flow. Uh, we just give here batch number 87. Um, data loading. Now into this particular job we're going to enter the data flow. So you can see here on the right hand side there's a vertical toolbar. We will not be going to each one of these micro because the separate certification course for the ETL consultants Likewise, all of these other micro features will not go in here, uh, but we will just check from the HANA standpoint how we perform the data loading. You will have your certified data services consultants for the implementation. If you are only the consultant uh, in the small POC or the project, then you should know the basic steps for the data loading from the HANA standpoint. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the third icon here, that's the data flow, click and click on the center of the screen. 
and this is the data flow. Right, so zero one. Each data flow can get connected to multiple other data flows. So there could be sequence of data flows. And to other data flows, so you can have a interrelated data flows. For our practice, we're going to go with this singular data flow. And into this data flow, we'll have a source and target. So double click to enter inside the data flow. So as you see, we were here in project, we were here in the job, we are here in the data flow. Now the data flow will require a source and a target and the mapping between the two. So for the source, we are going into the source data store, whichever is created by the administrator or already created by the administrator for the project. So multiple uh, data flow does not require multiple source data stores to be created. It is one source data store from one project and we can reuse the same connection. So every time a new data load is required, there's no need to create multiple and hundreds of connections because we got one dedicated connection to the source and from that source the dedicated data store bring that and do the mapping to the target. Okay. Now for our training purpose we will go with this one ECC underscore BODS source data store. Please also take the screenshot. ECC underscore BODS. This is our source data store. And what we have here are the different data sources. So we can load from our functions, from hierarchies, from the IDOCs, from extractors, operational data provisioning, the ODP, extractors or views, or tables. In the SLT only the tables were supported but not the others. But here in the BODS there are also other data sources that are supported. We'll try with the tables first and we'll come back with the extractor. Now let's extend the tables. So we got Mara, that's material master from a QM you got another master table for QM quality notifications and then another master table T005, that's a country code uh, master table. If you have any table that you would like to load, let me know on the chat box. I will import the table, perform the load. Any table name? All right, let's try with the PIPO. So what we have to do here is to right click in the tables and in that particular source data store and import. Now in the initial stage of the project, the lead of the BODS will import all at a point of time, if it is a green field. Import all, everything, whatever is active, import everything. Just the structure is getting imported, not the data. So import all, all activated tables. So today it is one of the best practice. Now, however, if you do not find the table here in the list, it is already not yet imported, you can also import by the name of the object. For brownfield projects, for POC, or any time when, when you do not find a table in the list, you can import by name. OK. 
Okay, so it could be any type of the table or objects that you would like to import. Import by names. So it's going to bring the structure of the object and import in the source data store. Remember, we got two different placeholders in the BODS, one for the source and the other for the target. Right? So, once you click here on import by name, you will have a pop-up screen asking the name of the table that you'll like to import. It could be a table, it could be a, an extractor, we're going to see the extractor example in a moment later. You can also try with the others. So, provide the table name and import the structure. All right, so PLPO, import. So, at this point of time, the BODS from that source data store is communicating in the backend source to get the structure of this table and then bring here in the list. Okay. So now this is the task list table, the PLPO table. We see that the structure, the sorry, the table name has been imported. PLPO. What we're going to do next after the import is to bring the table, to click, drag, and then drop to the right hand side in the data flow. So that's our source table. You see there is a small magnifying glass. Click on that icon. What's going to perform is to get us the first few hundred records for the data previewing so that we get to know that a table has some data. Without checking if you load and we see zero records is not a good practice. So as a ETL user consultant, it is an important practice to check that your underlying table from the source has got some data. Before you proceed any further, check first and perform after confirmation. So that's our table with certain fields. That's a task list, the task, and then different other parameter values, a mass of data table, and all the values over here. All right, so we are good to carry forward the task. Now, the source is ready. We have to bring in the target. Now remember the definition of replication. What is replication? Replication is the process of extracting the structure of the source, so this is what we have done, we have extracted the source structure plus data from that source by taking the structure as a replica, all right, as a replica, so as a template template with the structure of the source and then load with the data. Okay, so we are not going to create the target object. We just have to replicate. Right? So remember we have done a practice yesterday in the SLT. Did we create a table? No, we did not. In one of the other previous example, we have done an Excel flat file load. Did we create a table? No, we did not. We just 
replicated. So it arrives with a structure and the data structure is used as a template and then a new table has been created permanently in the target HANA with the data from the replication. Right. So what is the difference between a replication and an extraction? Replication will perform structure replica template plus the data create new table. But only an extraction will only extract the data and load it. Right. So if you're an ETL, you might have these kind of questions in your customer engagement. So we take the replica Okay, uh, left hand side, you will see the source data store, which is created by the administrator. That is uh, what we have uh, just uh, discussed about the connection parameters. Okay, so the source is ready. We have to bring the replica as a template. So go back to the source data store, you have confirmed that this is a table that you have just imported and this is the table that will be replicated. Now we will go to the target data store. For our example, we will go here, HANA underscore BODS and use a template. Where are these data stores created? These data stores are created in the local repository by the administrator. So how the administrator will create? They define one for the source, another one for the target. Right? So if it is a source connection to the ECC source, for example SAP application source, what is the database detail? So that is provided here. Who is the user and the password details and any other additional parameters will be provided by the administrator. RFC definition, destination details are all provided by the administrator. So similarly for the target, target is HANA, that's a database. Select here SAP HANA and HANA version, what is the HANA user, what is the port number, 15 or 17, who is the user, Oh, server name here, HND, and then who is the user and the password and additional parameter that I have to provide. These are done by the administrators. So for our example, we will go into the target data store, HANA underscore BODS. Then get a template. Just drag and drop over to the right hand side and provide the table name that will be created in the target HANA. Okay. So can you propose any table name that you would like to see in the HANA for this table? Okay, so let's put here HANA underscore PLPO. Let's put a Z object. Let's put this one because it's a customized development. Now where in HANA it is going to load, it's going to load in that schema. Right? So you specify that schema over here and then into that schema the table gets created and loaded with the data. Right? So we get a copy of the data from the ECC into the BODS with a structure.
and it gets loaded into the target schema that you specify. So when you're in the HANA, you have to check in the system schema. Yesterday for SLT was a different schema. For the BODS, we're using a different schema to give you a simulated example of actual project developments. So we will have to check our BODS load in the system schema and the tables. All right, so let's go back to the data services. Our table name will be zhana underscore plpo in the system schema. Click OK. So now both the source and the target are ready. We have to bring in the mapper between the two, the mapping. So click here on the fifth icon. There is a mapping, query transform mapping. And drag and draw the lines between the source table. You see there's a small uh, dot. Click, draw the line, connect to the arrow, to the mapping, and then from the dot from the mapping to the arrow to the target template. So we have prepared the connectivity. Now we have to prepare the mapping. So double click into the mapping. You will see two parts. One is the source fields, and the other one will be the target. At the moment, the target is empty, so we have to do the mapping from the source, and then accordingly, target will be mapped. So, expand here. We'll have the list of all the fields from this table that we are trying for our baseline data loading. You have so many different fields. There are over 230 fields over here in this table. Now, in SLT, it loads all the fields. We need it, we don't need it, it is going to stop pushing. But over here, we pull. We pull the data that we need on demand basis. So we're going to pull client number, initial fields, valid from, that's a date technical status of the task, change number. We select a few fields, what we need, and selectively other fields that we need. Right click and then map to output. Done, right? So. The fields that we need, you select here easily, without any program, without any filter. It's almost a graphical approach. All right. Now, each of these field technical names can also be changed. So if you want to change the name, you're valid from date, you just want to put here date. That's a technical status, just put here status. This is the change number. All right. So you can rename the fields. And the data types, if you want to change the data types, you can select the data type from the list. Now in SLT, you have to write the ABAP program to even change the data type with OpenSQL. That will be more challenging. But here, you can selectively identify the field, the technical names of the fields, the data types, length, even the description. I can change it here.
each of these field mappings in the data services can be called upon through different functions, aggregation functions, other functions, math functions, state functions, or custom functions or validation. So the certified BODS user can create these functions and we can use those functions. If there's a need, you can advise your ETL to create a function based upon the algorithm that you specify and then you can call that function per field and do the mapping over here. Or select from, so even the select command is more graphical. Select from where and you put a where clause by putting a where function or then group by, order by. So these are all the mappings that we can perform here beyond the field-to-field -field mapping that you see on the screen. So we have selected few fields. One, two, three. There are 16 fields. There are over 230 fields on the actual table. We selected only 16 fields. Let's validate the mapping. We go up here to this icon and click to validate the mapping. All right. So no errors are found. We are good. No warnings, no errors, just the information. We're almost there. So we started from the project, then to the job, then to the data flow. And in that data flow, we have selected our example table that we've done the mapping, and we've selected the fields between the source and target mapping, and we are now ready to execute this data flow. So we're going to run the job, right-click on the job and execute. Remember to save your, uh, your definitions. Click yes, and then it is going to initiate the data flow. Click OK, and the job gets started here in the BODS. You can try with any table that you like to perform the data loading, and then perform the mapping between the source and the target and then select the fields that you require, validate the mapping, and then start the data flow. All right? So now the data flow is ready. We have proceed of 18,273 records. Status is stopped, meaning the job is completed. 18,273. Let's confirm it first before we go to HANA. Let's get the confirmation from the source. It may be part of the reconciliation tasks that you have to do with your source system, with your extraction system team, and of course HANA, before you go into HANA. Okay, so what we're going to do here is to go to that table and get the row count. How many fields, uh, how many records do you see here? 18,273. And how many do we get here in the BODS? 18,273. So row counts are matching. Now we are ready to go to HANA. In the HANA system, in the system schema, get uh, Write schema. Do you have so many different schemas? You got to confirm which one that you're using, and refresh the list of the tables. What was our table name? It was starting with a Z. Let's scroll down here below, and then 
there was uh, um, Zihana, all right, and then PLPO. This is the table that we have just replicated from source through the BODS. It's a live activity. Double click on this object to see the definition. How many fields are there? There are 16 fields. Only the ones that we need, we pull that, not all everything together. The one, the fields that you need, we pull it. And we've also made some change in the field, field names. Right? So you can get the field name here. And then if you want to see the data, right click and open data preview. That's our records that you find here. So just make sure the data is available in the source, get the mapping done and do the loading. Now if you want to append the structure of this table by adding a new field, so that will take place at the source, append structure, and you want to bring that new field. So without disrupting, without dropping this table in the HANA, so whenever there's a table level changes, ideally in the other extraction tool, you got to drop the table, drop, delete the table structure with the content, and then reload with the new structure. So that becomes disruptive for the users working on this table. In HANA, it's non-disruptive. The table structure exists for the data. At the same time, we can add more records. Let's add four more records selectively, and then just replay the job and it's going to have the automatic alignment without the need of deleting the table in the target. So what we're going to do here is to go back into the mapping and we're going to select four more fields for the master data. I'm going to select here plant, we'll select the language key, the activity type, right, and then the um, wage group type. So you can select, uh, let's go for the cost element. We're selecting four more fields, right click and map it. Remember, we're not deleting the target table. What we're doing here is realigning the mapping of the fields in the data service, check the validation, looks okay, and run the job again. Save yes for the new change and just run the job. So now the job is started. We've added four more fields without disrupting the target HANA table. Proceed, start, stop. 18,273. Let's go to HANA. We only had 16 fields. All right, so we're going to close the screen over here and then double click to open the new screen. So there were only 16 fields. Now we have added new field, the plant, right? The language key, the activity type, and the cost element. So it's almost non disruptive. There's no need to drop a table for the extension of the field structure, the table. We just have to rerun the job. Get the data, right click open data preview, and you have the other new fields added. You got plant 1300, that's a plant status. So these are the other fields that we've added. And that's how it works in the BODS. This is one example. So this is the table example, example number one. Example number two, we will go with an extractor because the reason why we're going with the extractor, although it is out of the syllabus, because extractor is a universal metadata. Right? The extractor. Extractor for the embedded extractor by using the BW extractors. 
because extractor are rich metadata that connect from multiple tables. So that brings our task much more easier. We don't have to investigate table-table relationships. Extractor does the job already. Standard or a customized extractor. Some of the BW folks working with the sources where there is a extractor requirement for the replication for HANA project, you got to bring that extractor in the BODS and use the extractor for performing the BODS replication. All right, so we'll create another job. for the extractor based. Batch number 87, EX for extractor. So in one project folder, you can have multiple jobs. Each job for different type of data sources. So we're going to go for the next example for extractor based data loading. What is an extractor? An extractor is a metadata based. The metadata is nothing but data about data. That's the dictionary definition. So it's a metadata, ba metadata based provider which have already the mapping for different tables. So if you want to load for a finance accounting general ledger, there are at least 11 tables associated in the FIGL. If you are performing the task of an inventory data load, there are six tables primarily associated. And then index tables and aggregate tables. Plenty of tables have to be uh, replicated for more unified data loading. So extractor based data loading may be another requirement for the brownfield projects. Brownfield meaning customer already have a matured SAP ERP source. So they ask you get the extractors that's much more easier. It might be prescribed or recommended by the consulting. So you got to get the extractors as a source. Based on that extractors we can perform the load to HANA. So going back to the source data store, you have account payables, general ledger, then you have the header, item table, sales, and other. These are all the LIS extractors from the ERP source. These extractors are already embedded, predefined. It could be a Z extractor, Customize extractor standard. Okay, this is a little bit advanced, but it may be important to your consulting engagement. Not related to the certification exams at all, but you get these kind of questions in interviews. That's why we'll investigate one step further. So what we're going to do is search the extractor. Please provide an extractor name if you have uh, worked on those. And we're going to search the extractor, we'll find, and we'll replicate. Any BW related extractors you want to try? Okay, so we have uh, BW, um, the, the source extractor, ERP source extractor. Okay, so we go here, external data, C 
So it will be the source extractor from the ERP. Provide the extractor name. Let's try with the zero vendor if it exists in the source. We'll find it. If not, we'll go with the other extractor. So zero vendor, a search point. It is a ODP, Operational Data Provisioning Extractor, and search. can try with the ERP extractor also for your practice like LIS with the application component for SD, for MM, for the HR, for the material management inventory, for production planning controlling extractor, plant maintenance extractor, FI extractor. You can try with any one of those for your self-practice. Alright. So we have the zero vendor underscore ATTR. That's an attribute master data for the vendor. It is an embedded extractor in the source. It could be for master data, for zero material, zero customer, zero vendor, likewise, or transactional, or header, or line item extractor. So we got an extractor. We found it. Zero vendor ATR. We can close this, and we can start with the import. So I'm going to type the extractor name. Once we find it, you can import it. If you don't find, that basically means that the extractor may, need, may not be activated. So type the name of the object. Provide the details. Name of the customer. Batch number 87 training. Name of the project. HANA. ETL project, for example, get in the query mode. This is how it's going to get the fields from the source. Click OK. And then the extractor will be imported with the structure. Just like a table, it, the structure is imported to the source data store. Bring that on to the right hand side. Um, just hold on, you got to have your data flow. Okay, provide a data flow. Batch number 87, extractor data flow. So into the data flow, drag and drop the extractor source. Then you can check the content, just the first hundred records to check the preview of the vendor master data extractor from the source, from the ERP source, check. So at this point in time it's going to retrieve the data from the vendor master based upon the extractor and then the extractable data. So it is okay for now. Then what we go for is the target data store. We're going to use HANA bots. Get a template over here to drag the template table to the right hand side and provide the table name. So I propose a table name for this extractor. Let's put here Z0 vendor ATR attribute. All right, so that will be our table name in the target in the specified schema. Schema names may be different based upon the project for the extraction for HANA. You got to provide. And for training, we're using system schema. Click OK. We're almost there. We have to do the mapping between the two. Connect. And 
map the fields. This is the vendor. So we're going to select few, vendor number, vendor title, vendor train station, the master data industry key, authorization group, and group key, subscriber number, vendor account number, customer number, country key. We're selecting few fields. Map to the output, check the mapping, all OK, and then run the job. All right, so proceed 2,621 records. Then check into the target HANA. You may want to refresh the list of the tables here in the system schema. Right click and refresh. That's our Z table, Z0 attribute. The list of the fields that we have replicated are all in here. And once the data load is completed, you will see the data set when you do the data previewing. Now, there might be some of the master data tables or extractors in a project. All right, so this is the approach of the extractor based data loading. Okay, so let's summarize the points from the BODS replicator. Today in the installation implementation consulting prescriptions, the BODS 4.2 is to be used and in the BODS you have a source and target data store which will be used for the mapping and we can connect from any type of source. There is no limitation if you have a extractor or a function or a database view or a IDOC or hierarchies or the tables or SAP non-SAP source, database source, big data source, web source, you can replicate from any type of the sources. All right, so let's open our session note from yesterday. So we have made top 10 points of the SLT. Likewise, today for our session note, we'll make top 10 points for the BODS. All right, so number one, it is today known as SAP Data Services. Version is 4.2. Then second point, number two. It comes along with the HANA database license as a freeware and also with additional license cost for additional advanced features. So it's available both as a freeware for the basic version and the full version with an extra license cost to the customer. 
It can replicate from any source. SAP, non-SAP application, database, big data, web source, etc. Then in the BODS we have a repository system. The repository is a work space or a work area. In that workspace you will have different authorization for different users. And in, in each of these workspace you have a source and target data stores that have to be defined, connected by the administrator before the ETL project is started. So when the administrator hand over the extractor, the source and target data store for the project would already be tested and available. Next. The BODS can load tables ODP, so ODP can comprise of the database views, database extractors or source application extractors. from iDocs or hierarchies. So you have to work through your BODS counterpart to understand the concept of the BODS in more detail. If you need to know more, you can also apply for a certification uh, training and certification examination on the BODS for ETL consultants. Point number seven is that you got selective option of load. So selective fields, not all the fields, but you can select the field that you need. For the data loading. And it comes along with standardized transformation functions. Routines or formulas or you can create custom formulas or custom functions. Right. Then the non-disruptive data loading. So when you want to add a new field, you don't have to drop the table and the data. You can just replay the job and non-disruptive data loading with the new fields. The last point is that it supports HDFS, Hadoop file system, and uh, new emerging data sources like XML pipeline, the input split, mapper function, reducer function, map reduce function, geocoder data sources, and any new emerging data sources. So these are the top 10 points for BODS. Today it is known as SAP Data Services.
So the difference between the two replicators, SLT versus BODS, is that SLT is available for SAP sources, whereas BODS is available for any type of source. SLT is entirely 100% free, but BODS may be free for the basic version and may have an additional cost to the customer for extra features. In the SLT, it can only load tables, but here in the BODS, it can load more than the tables. Extractors or database views or IDOCs or hierarchies or functions. Different micro-level features are supported. In the SLT, it only loads all the it loads all the fields that are part of the table. We don't have option to select this field or that field. Every fields are loaded. But here in the BODS, you can get the field that you need and not the field that you don't need. Selective fields for the data loading. In the SLT for transformations, we have to have our ABAP team, certified ABAP developers with experience of writing include programs with the event base and the parameter base and the assignment rule mapping table and different other uh, ABAP artifacts and ABAP repository objects. But here in the BODS, it comes along with standardized transformation functions, although you can create custom functions as well here. Less coding, more graphical. Right? So those are the difference between SLT and BODS. All right, so with this, we close the session here. We are now opening for your queries and questions. Any questions from today's session? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I have it straight as far as um, the data is concerned. So we have the data in ECC, so when we replicate it, we're bringing everything into business objects, and then we're bringing it to HANA. And also when we're doing the deltas, so we have to keep those tables in place in business objects, correct? Correct, at the time of the data flow, correct. And once the data loading job is completed, the data is dropped from the BODS. Oh, really? So, so how does it handle the data? I mean the delta, the delta loads. The delta loads is uh, through the CDC in the BODS. So uh, it does not have the very complex uh, or more advanced feature of the BW delta management. Uh, okay. What it does in the B, in the BODS is whenever there is an insert, whenever there is an update, and whenever there is a delete. These are the three factors that the BODS will uh, go for the delta. Exactly the same in the SLT also. When there, whenever there is a new insert or a update or a delete, so then the delta will be involved. So in delta management BODS is done through the CDC through the workflows. Okay. Thank you. All right. We have a next question. Let's go to the note. For refreshing the data from bots to HANA, is the batch job schedule a regular interval? Yes, as indicated earlier, the batch job can be scheduled. And they're scheduled via the workflows. So what is a workflow? A workflow is a data flow which is scheduled at interval, regular interval, every single minute, every single second, or every midnight, or time of the day, every four hours. Right? So we schedule the workflow in the BODS for each different data flow to refresh the data from bots to HANA. Correct?
Next question. Any question from the session today? All right, we got a next one. So when we have both SLT and data services, what is the best practice? All right. So the best practice uh, is do we keep these in two different schema folder in HANA or it will be done commonplace for all staging? Well, uh, basically, it depends upon the type of the source, right? Okay, so generally, if single source, but multiple replicator, so you've got both SLT and bots together, but it is single source, then single schema in HANA. This is a common practice. But if there are local developments and local data loading testing Right? If local extraction from the single source, it may be the same SAP source, but it is from local servers. One is from uh, local Argentina, another one is local from Brazil, and you're loading to target HANA, which is in US, you can have different schemas. Right? So if local extractor local extractions, single server, or multiple servers, or multiple source, single source, multiple source. The best to practice is to maintain different schemas. So it ultimately helps to distinguish the local systems in different schemas, one for a local development, you are using the SLT for local SAP based, and the other one, BODS, is still connected to the SAP, but in the future, you may want to bring in other sources. So BODS, you bring that to another schema, and that's the best practice. So in our training, we're maintaining two different schemas, although we are using the same source, but two different schemas for two different replicators. And this will be helpful for scale out uh, from your existing POCO demo to other larger landscape. So best of practice. Now common practice is different and best practice is different. Common practices for local developments or demo or POC, but best practice comes from different combinations of use cases. The best practice, maintain different schemas for multiple source or multiple replicators. All right, next question, please.
Okay, so start with your practice tonight before it's too late. Uh, because when we come back tomorrow, we will have a new topic. Our next session, we are going to start to understand the HANA data modeling. Based upon the tables that we replicate, we will take an example to start our data modeling. So I've created a Excel output, uh, Excel outline document, which we're going to use for our uh, training proof of concept. And uh, the training support will be sharing the Excel file by the end of tomorrow's session. We're going to simulate an example uh, with a live source and a table that we want and uh, deliverables that we have to create from this project work. Okay. We'll start creating data models. When you create a data models, we'll also follow certain specific naming standards. All right, so that will be the agenda to start up tomorrow. It's a new topic, the HANA data modeling. All right, my friends, so this brings to the end of tonight's session. Please continue with the practice on the BODS, get the table loading going on, try with some extractor. If you have any difficulties, get the support staff. They will help you. They will ask you to come online on Skype. They will be able to guide you accordingly. All right. So that's it for tonight. And uh, yeah. The session notes, uh, we'll be sharing that after today's session. I will have to save it and uh, I'll send it to the support, absolutely. Batch number 87, session number four. Save it. All right, so have a good one, guys. We'll connect tomorrow, same time. Till then, take care and bye-bye for now. <laughs>